Jonathan in the UK, uh, you're, you've got questions about your partner, and it seems like you may, might have picked a good week to call in about it. Hi, Matt. Hi, hi Hector. Hello. Cheers. Um, I think, if I'm right, you've both got uh, Christian backgrounds, so I think that might help you uh, answer this one. I do not, but go ahead. Okay, well, well then, specifically, Matt, I know from uh, listening to a few of your things in the past, you've got much more Christianity in your background than I have. Um, so I'm an atheist. Um, my wife is a Christian, and she's been through some, some very difficult things of late and is, um, is worried that, that or feels that, that God is, is uh, punishing her. Mm-hmm. And I want some advice on how to handle that without challenging her faith. Because I'm, well, I'm happy to challenge people's faith outside of, of marriage and so on. This, so you'd like to stay I'm married, not trying to change about my wife. Yeah, uh, I understand that, and, and it, I don't think that anybody has to have any sort of Christian background to have thoughts on this. And and I think I'm really looking forward to, to Hector's thoughts on this specifically. But it, so the questions that I would ask, you know, if somebody came to me and said, "Hey, I think God is punishing me, and this is why things are going wrong in my life," my I don't know how to address that without challenging what their beliefs are. You you are challenging a belief. You don't necessarily have to challenge every aspect of that belief. You can say, well, if God is punishing you, I mean, have you been, you know, I'm faithful to this God? Have you sincerely reached out to find out what's going on? Have you asked God? And maybe you're not getting an answer, but if you're doing everything that you can to try to be right with God and God is still punishing you, or, or you think God is still punishing you, maybe it's possible that you're wrong. And that really what's happening here is that God isn't punishing you, but you are the type of person who is looking at this and thinking that's the case. And you need to, I I really can't go beyond that uh, other than saying, how do you tell the difference between I think God is punishing me and God is actually punishing me? But I, I don't know how to ask that without really challenging somebody's faith. Yeah, it, it's hard. My, you know, the the only thing I I would like to say about this is that when you're going through problems and and you project those problems onto onto God, it's just it's almost like you're you're removing your own agency from solving these problems, and then it becomes kind of like a negativity bias. Like any bad thing that happens, you think, "Oh, I'm being punished. I'm being punished," and it just kind of compounds because that's what you're focusing on. It just seems like like a really negative spiral. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more curious about w- the reasons behind why you wouldn't challenge her belief on, on this topic besides, you know, wanting to stay married as Matt <laughs> mentioned. I, yeah. So, so that, that that's a, it's a fair question. Um, I, I see it as sort of part of the um, part of the deal, and so on. On there, that um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not trying to to challenge who she is, and um, uh, but I but I accept that this is this makes it kind of difficult to uh, to challenge a particular aspect of her religion, um, and uh, hopefully. Good times will come and and things will go into context. But um, uh, I was I was wondering if there was if there was anything specific about um, why why people believe within Christianity that they're being punished. Or something ah, you could. Yeah, you could and, and there's lots. There's that. there's some stuff that which I'm sure Hector can address from a psychological standpoint and also from a biblical standpoint. You kind of you kind of handcuffed me a little bit by asking me how do you deal with this without challenging somebody's faith because it, it is a functional part of their faith. I mean, there's lots of questions I'd love to hear the answer to from your wife, which is why does she think God's punishing her and 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 is God punishing you as well or is she is God punishing her? because she's married to you, because you're essentially a non-believer apostate. Um, I grew up in a family where if something was going wrong, it's because your walk with God wasn't good enough. You you had done something wrong and you were deserving. God was basically putting hardships and trials and tribulations in your path to try to get you on the right path. This is a fundamental idea within Christianity that we are fallen and broken. We can never live up to what God expects. And God is going to put trials in our path 
in order to help us find our way back to the right path. You know, it, it, it's almost like God is putting brambles along the path to keep you as shepherd as he can, but you can go marching through them. I'm, I'm probably stealing something from a preacher when I was eight or 10 or something like that. But if she's okay with you, I, I wonder if she thinks that is she being punished for something she did, something she didn't do, or for you? Oh, that's, that's a good point. Um, I don't. I, I think it's more that she she feels she's being punished, but she doesn't know why. Yeah, and if God's the one punishing, then God's the only one that can answer it. And if God doesn't answer it, and she's honestly doing her best, um. What else could she do? That's um, that's a fair response. Um, Actually, I don't know if you want to jump I, in on this on the psychology of belief and stuff. Well, I'm I, I'm I'm just kind of thinking about this this gentleman's dilemma here, and and it's it seems like a lot of times when people. Um, avoid challenging uh, loved ones religious beliefs is to protect them emotionally because they're afraid they're going to do some kind of emotional harm but is the belief of a punishing god doing emotional harm i mean because if god's punishing you you have no control over it you can't stop it you can't you can't you know you can't what are you going to do except for a plead for mercy so i i don't know i just i just think maybe can these kinds of beliefs be compartmentalized and saying, okay, maybe I'm not challenging God, but how about the notion of a God that punishes people at random when you didn't do anything wrong? I mean, could you go there? Is that, is that somewhere you could go without, you know, damaging the relationship? Um, yeah, that might be worth, that, that might be worth trying. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I don't know if there's, if there's any more to specifically address, if you, if you have more questions or whatever, you can uh, call back. I, I also recommend, you know, even in, even in the UK, you may be able to reach out to recovering from religion um, to see if there are counselors or Great groups idea. of people who are dealing with similar things, because quite often it, it, the people who are in a long-term relationship with a committed partner, whose, whose religious views or views on religion are different from theirs uh, it, is not an uncommon situation in, in talking to other people who've been in those situations, who may have, maybe I'll tell you what worked for them and what didn't work for them, uh, could give you ideas within your own relationship. But the, the thing I'm always going to come back to is... It's not really been a problem in the past, but I, right. but I uh, and, and it wasn't the sort of problem I expected it to be, but yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, the thing I'm always going to recommend is just have an honest conversation with your partner. Um, let them know that this isn't you trying to take away their religion or anything else, but you are worried that something has changed and that they are sitting there uh, feeling as if God is punishing them when, you know, not you're in a position where you don't think there's a God to punish them at all. But even if you agreed with them about their view of God, that maybe you don't see this as punishment and maybe they're reading something into it. But more importantly, ask them, what can you do to help and how can you be supportive while they're going through the difficult time? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Cheers. That's, That's a it. One. That's a tough situation. I mean, I, the, as the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. And so I'm not going to be in a relationship with a Christian anytime soon. Uh, very happy with the relationship I'm in, but I have met plenty of people who are, are in those situations. And, and what's worse is that sometimes it turns into a fight and a custody battle and all this other stuff. And it seems like they've been together for a while. This has not been an issue. And then boom, out of the blue, you know, hey, maybe God's punishing me. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I'm resisting the impulse to say, well, how about don't worship a God that, you know, in a religion that's slaughtered thousands of people and is known for punishing people mercilessly, you know, try to try to move on from that theology if you can. But I don't know. A lot of times I wonder if there's also an underlying depression people start feeling that that needs to be addressed because you know uh one 
symptom of depression is feelings of worthlessness. And that just tends to be entwined with religious worship where you feel less worthy than your God. I'm, I'm worthless compared to you. And, and it kind of gets, it kind of gets translated into, you know, into, into religion in, in that way. So uh, maybe there's that going on too. Yeah. It's, it's probably, I mean, through, through an organization like recovering from religion, they can get to something like the secular therapist project mm. and, and things like that. Great it's organization. just, mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, he calls in about his Christian wife. I don't want to point her. Actually, I'd love to point her to the Secular Therapist Project because then she'd be getting actual science-based help as opposed to perhaps going to a minister and stump someone who's going to just reinforce whatever spiritual, I don't want to use, well, I'll go with delusion. She's she's currently under, at least. Right. I, I worry, and, and you know, let's, let's, let's take a minute on that front because, you know, I, I've sp spoken with you. I've spoken with uh, Daryl Ray and Marlene Winnell and others. Uh, who, who've dealt with this, we have the Secular Therapist Project, which exists for a reason. And that is because without it, if you go to a therapist, they may just, in many cases, go along with what you believe and tell you, ah, well, this you, your spiritual walk has failed, or you need to talk to your minister, or you need to get right, right with God, instead of offering kind of sound science-based reasoning. Uh, you know, I, tell, tell us a little bit about what you've seen in, uh, along those lines and, and, you know, why you're a fan of the Secular Therapist Project as well. Well, for that, for that very reason, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to um, address a problem like this through, through spiritual means, I mean, what you, you're not going to pray depression away. You know, you need, you need to, to access uh, modern psychiatry and evidence-based psychotherapies and uh, instead of spinning your wheels. Um, you know the 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 former way. So I mean, that's uh, that that's why I just I, I value that organization so so highly. I think uh, maybe maybe somebody like her actually could benefit from from that kind of therapy. Yeah, at it, least a referral. At least a referral for a secular therapist. Yeah, and if it finds that you know if, if you're if you're involved, I find it curious because if I if somebody, irrespective of what the religious beliefs were, let's say they were they were. Um, they found themselves a therapist that who's not secular, who, who is advocating for some superstitious, religious, spiritual, pseudoscientific woo stuff as well. That could, even for people who were accepted those sorts of things and, and it was part of their religion, that could still be something that they might not want. They might actually want, you know, hey, I, I, I think there's a God. I don't think God's punishing me, but I'm depressed. So stop telling me about how I need to get right with God. I'd love to get this. So the, the psychotherapist is, is going to be good and beneficial for everybody, irrespective of what their beliefs are, because, you know, we're talking about real, the best scientific, you know, methods for dealing with something which is almost frustratingly ineffable to, to science, which is human psychology. I mean, you know, we have this field and it's a field of study, but it's, you know, it's not like we can put a brain in a beaker and determine exactly what made somebody be one way or, or believe one way or how to go about changing it or whether we should make appeals to the norm. Uh, it's a field that obviously, I mean, gets a lot of derision, especially from like Scientologists. Scientologists freaking hate you. <laughs> I mean, you, you are, you are an abomination from, from the Scientologist perspective. But. Well, the feelings mutual. <laughs>